waltz across the stage. So Charlie, uh, Char uh, yeah, we're back in three, four, right? We're in the, yeah, Charlie, good. So how did Charlie just get? Okay, good. Fantastic. So what? What? We don't need a doll. <clears throat> Why? We can just say Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Okay. So you're gonna have a little bit of a waltz with the girls. So what's gonna happen is, Christina, you're gonna be on the, the back side. So it's gonna be a little bit of a three-person dance. So Christina, so you're gonna be facing. No, you're on the back. Passion is about kind of a love triangle that takes place between a soldier and then the two women in his life. It's about different forms of love. So it's one Italian soldier who's torn between someone he begins to show in love with, um, who is married. So there is some, uh, there's trouble in their relationship. And then he meets someone who falls in love with him. Um, and it's a very different kind of love that he ends up giving back to her in a certain way. So it kind of shows the different ways that you can be attracted to people and the different types of love that you can have for people. My character's name is Clara. Um, she serves as the foil to Fosca, which means that she's kind of the opposite, so you can compare the two and see their differences. Um, in fact, we realize in Latin, Clara means light and Fosca means darkness, so they are meant to be opposed to one another. Fosca is in her late 20s. She's not particularly beautiful, and she suffered a lot of emotional trauma, which has kind of led to a diminished state of health. and. Um, as a result, that's followed her kind of throughout the rest of her life. So she spent a lot of her life being isolated. Clara is very bright and very lovely. However, she's kind of um, empty, I think, inside at times. Um, Fosca tends to be very complicated because she's kind of allowed herself to stew in all of these emotions for years and years. People don't really see her as a person. And so when she meets this Captain Giorgio for the first time, it's addicting to her and she takes to it in kind of an unhealthy way. but you sympathize with her. Because we're doing a double feature, we're doing two different musicals in one night, our set is two different sets put together. Uh, so in the opening, when you first come, it's passion, and the set is this luxurious double staircase. It looks like it's in a mansion. Um, everything is deep reds and burgundies. And then in Assassins, we strip away the facing. We take away one of those staircases, and we replace it with an industrial old one. We get the feeling that this whole set is actually very degraded and has been abandoned many years ago. Knowing the two shows fairly well, uh, really it was just a lot of rereading over and over and over again and listening to it a whole lot to kind of let the different characters sink in. And then it's when I realized that there could be a crossover in people that I got excited. It was daunting <laughs> putting the two shows together. Uh, I knew that it was intentional. I knew that Randy wanted it this way, that it's something that he'd been attempting to do for a couple of seasons and this is the season that we got to do it. Assassins is a concept musical uh, based around the lives of the different presidential assassins, both those successful and unsuccessful. So we have some notable characters such as John Wilkes Booth, uh, John Hinckley Jr., Lee Harvey Oswald, as well as some lesser known ones such as Leon Cholgosh or Giuseppe Zangara. So it's kind of a really, at first a little uncomfortable for the audience because they're, you don't want to like them, you don't want to feel for them. But then as you watch the show more and more, you start to adjust and you actually see these people, these crazy people, as human beings. I play uh, Leon Chogos. He was the American-born son of Polish immigrants. He assassinated President William McKinley in 1901. And he is a fascinating character to play because he's very angry and obviously very violent, but he was also weirdly sympathetic. John Hinckley Jr. and all of the characters in Assassins are real people. They're not just characters who are made up. Uh, John Hinckley Jr. as well as two of our other characters are still alive and that's really interesting because you don't, it's not just a blank canvas. These are real people and you have to authentically tell their stories. I am playing the proprietor in Assassins. He is one of, if not the only fictional character in the show. I. Uh, I kind of instigate the chaos. I give all the assassins their guns at the very beginning, and then I just sort of sit back and watch the uh, the, the chaos unfurl. So I'm moving to or he's coming to me. He's coming to where you were, and you're slowly going to back up and then protect the girls. Oh, yeah, I see they're going to flank you. The material in these two plays is so rich, and every character, even the most minor ones, just have so much, so many layers that you you get to bring out. Sondheim is really gifted in writing complicated characters 
So all of their flaws are very evident. It's been incredible. Um, I, I love it. You know, I've never done two shows together, so doing it is very fun. It's hard, it's kind of scary, but it's really fun. It's been really, I guess it's been an honor working on it and working on it with these people and with Adrian and kind of fulfilling Randy's vision in that way. I think seeing anything new for the first time is really exciting. I think there is something to be said for coming to see a show where you know what to expect. You know what to expect when you come to see um, Fiddler on the Roof or Big River. You know what you're coming in for. There's something really exciting to me about going to see a show and having no idea what you're in for. And the other thing they can expect is this group in particular are theater company veterans, theater company favorites that are working extremely hard and are gonna be doing things that you've never seen them do before. So I think anyone who's been a regular person, a regular uh, audience member here for a while, they've grown to love us for various reasons and I think they're gonna come and really be impressed by the people and what they're doing. You think? Okay. <laughs> okay. And one, two, three, four, five, six.